Hi there, I'm Sir Sandro and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And in this video, we are going to continue our discussion on absolute value inequalities in one variable. So if you haven't watched the part one, please do, do, because that part one discusses the basics uh, about absolute value inequalities, including their properties. So since this is a discussion or a continuation of our discussion, we're just going to focus on practice exercises. And by the end of this video, you are expected to solve absolute value inequalities in one variable and represent the solution set graphically. All right. So let's have this uh, summary of the properties of absolute value inequalities. We have four, right? We have four uh, properties. And the first one is if absolute value of x is less than a, then x is greater than negative a, but less than a. And the second one is if absolute value of x is less than or equal to a, then x is greater than or equal to negative a, but less than or equal to a. And uh, last time I added uh, an another information about the first two properties since this is a compound inequality and we call this as conjunction. Let's proceed to number three. If absolute value of x is greater than a, then x is less than negative a or x is greater than a. And the fourth property, if absolute value of x is greater than or equal to a, then x is less than or equal to negative a or x is greater than or equal to a. And since this is a compound inequality or we call this disjunction. Anyway, uh, conjunction and disjunction, you're going to encounter these terms when you tackle about logic and about uh, statements, conditional, etc. Okay. Uh, all right. We also uh, graph these four properties. We were able to graph them individually. And of one and two, we have this mnemonic aid, right? In order for us to remember. Uh, if it is a union or intersection, if this is less than or less than or equal to less than, we say less than, right? Because we know that and is an intersection. Intersection. And for the greater than and greater than or equal to, we say because it's great or greater than or equal to, we say great, great or, right? Great or, it means union. So we will be guided by these properties in solving later, no? different practice exercises uh, about absolute value inequalities. Right, so let's proceed to practice uh, item number one. 2 minus the absolute value of 4x is greater than or equal to negative 6. All right, so what do you think is the first step that we're going to employ here? Remember that we need to isolate, no? The first step is to isolate the absolute value, right? And we can see here that we have 2 and this negative beside 4x, the absolute value of 4x, greater than or equal to negative 6. So the first thing that we're going to do here is to subtract two on both sides. We're going to employ subtraction property of inequality. We have two minus two, minus two, and two minus two, this will become zero. And we're just going to copy this negative. So we have negative times the absolute value of four X is greater than or equal to negative 6 minus 2, that is negative 8. Okay, that's negative 8. And we want absolute value of 4x on the left. We don't want this negative here. So what are we going to do? We are going to divide or multiply by negative 1 on both sides, right? So we're going to divide negative one, divide 
negative 1. And your brain should automatically tell you that if you are dividing or multiplying by a negative number, your inequality sign should reverse. Okay? So in this case, we have negative divided by negative 1. That's just positive. So that will become 4x, right? Absolute value of 4x, rather. Instead of writing greater than or equal to, we're going to reverse this. It will become less than or equal to negative 8 divided by negative 1 is positive 8. And now this is our more simplified absolute value inequality, which is absolute value of 4x is less than or equal to 8. Do we have any question? All right. After isolating the absolute value, we have to identify if this absolute value inequality is an intersection or a union, right? Since this is less than or equal to, remember, less than the end. And we know that this is an intersection, less than, right? Less than, intersection intersection. All right, since this is an intersection, the first thing that we're going to do to set up our uh, compound inequality is to just drop the absolute value, this one, drop the absolute value and copy everything. So we have 4x is less than or equal to 8. That's the first thing. And the second uh, step that you're going to do is to find the reverse of this. Okay, let's reverse the less than or equal to. So we have the greater than or equal to. Again, 4x is less than or equal to 8. And we're going to get the reverse of less than or equal to. And that is greater than or equal to. And we're going to multiply negative to 8. Negative times 8. So in this case, this will become negative times 8. Can you follow? And that is our compound inequality. And we just need to, to solve the value of x. We are going to divide everything by 4. Divide everything by 4. And, and we, have, we have x, this will cancel, is greater than or equal to negative 8 divided by negative 4, that's negative 2, but less than or equal to 8 divided by 4, that is 2. And this is now our solution. Now, since I will be requiring you to write this in interval notation and graph, then you have no choice but to write the solution set in interval notation and graph it, okay? And we have to express this in interval notation. Since this is an intersection, x is greater than or equal to negative 2, but less than or equal to 2. So we have negative 2, comma, 2. And we have to enclose them by what? Parenthesis or bracket? That is bracket. So we're going to enclose both of them by bracket because both numbers, the negative 2 and 2, are included in the solution set. Okay? So we have our interval notation, and we're going to graph it. We're going to graph our solution set. Okay? So we have... Okay, we have here the negative 2 and the 2. We have the negative 2, we have the 0, and we have the 2. So, so since this is just between negative 2 and 2, I mean from negative 2 to 2, uh, they are included. So everything here, everything between negative 2 and 2 okay, is part of the solution set. And that includes negative 2 and 2. Example number two. All right. Example number two. We have 
1 minus 4 times the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to 17. Again, 1 minus 4 times the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to 17. You might want to pause this video and then solve it in, uh, independently. And after solving it, then you may resume watching the video so you can confirm if your answer is correct. So the first step that we're going to do is to isolate the absolute value. So we're going to subtract one on both sides, subtract one on both sides. We have here zero, negative four times the absolute value of X plus two is less than or equal to 17 minus one, that is 16, okay? And we're going to divide everything by negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. And of, of course, since we divided by negative 4, we know that our inequality sign will change or will reverse. So this will become, instead of less than or equal to, that will become greater than or equal to, right? So we have uh, the absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 16 divided by negative four, that is negative, uh, yeah, negative four, all right? Again, x plus two, the absolute value of x plus two is greater than or equal to negative four. So I want you to observe. I want you to pause for a while and observe, okay? Think about it the absolute value of x plus two is greater than or equal to negative four. Mm -hmm. So this is, right, uh, we know that the answer of this absolute value will never be negative. So it could be a positive or it could be zero, right? Non-negative. And we know, no? We know that a positive or zero is always, greater than any negative numbers. So in this case, absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than or equal to negative 4. This is true, always true. This is always true, right? Always true. So therefore, therefore our solution set Okay, we don't have to set up now. We don't have to set up, oh, sir, that's greater or less than because we just used our common sense, right? Uh, we know that a non-negative number is always greater than any negative number. So this statement is always true. Therefore, our solution set is all real numbers. Okay? So if... If you are asked to graph that graph, you just need to draw a number line and let me use a different color to emphasize that your solution set is all real numbers. Okay, do we have any problem with this example? Example number two. Okay, let's proceed to the third example. The third example, we have the absolute value of 3x minus 5. The absolute value of 3x minus 5 is less than 0. Okay. The absolute value of 3x minus 5 is less than 0. Think about it. Think about it. We know that by definition, absolute value is never negative, right? This is never negative. So in this case, the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is less than 0. It means negative. This is a false statement. Huh? This is a false uh, statement. Therefore, we say that our solution or 
uh, or this particular absolute value inequality is an empty set, right? This is an empty set. All right. How about if we have, for example number four, how about if we have four, the absolute value of 4x minus 7 is less than or equal to 0? Hmm, that's an interesting given. Think about it. You may pause the video and take your time to think about this problem. If you observe class, that example number 3 and example number 4, they are kind of similar. But in this case, we have less than zero. So automatic, no? Automatic, this is a false statement because uh, an absolute value can never negative, can never be negative. In this case, we have this equal to symbol, less than or equal to zero. What do you think? If this is less than zero, then empty set, but there is an equal to. Remember, remember class that the absolute value, I, I keep on repeating this, can be positive or it can also be zero, right? Non-negative. In short, non-negative. So in this case, what if this absolute value is zero? In this case, we are going to find, no, we are going to find that value of x that will make our absolute value equal to zero, okay? So let's equate that to zero, 4x minus 7. 4x minus 7 is equal to zero. We have to add 7 on both sides, addition property of equality. 4x is equal to 7. And then we're going to divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4. We have x, okay, x is equal to 7 fourths. Now, sir, ano nang seven fourths? Class, this is the only solution to our absolute value inequality. Seven fourths. Let's check. Okay, let's check. If we are going to substitute x is equal to seven fourths to our absolute value inequality, let's go. We have four times seven fourths. Minus 7, absolute value of that. Absolute value of 4 times 7 fourths. Okay. 4 times 7 fourths minus 7 is less than or equal to 0. We know that this will just cancel 4 and 4. And we will be left with 7 minus 7. Absolute value is less than or equal to 0. 7 minus 7 is 0. Absolute value of that is 0. And... We know that the absolute value of zero is equal to zero as well. So in this case, if x is equal to seven fourths, we have a true statement. True statement. So in this particular example, we have seven fourths as the only solution. Okay, we have seven fourths as the only solution for this particular absolute value in equality. All right? Solution set natin, seven fourths lang yet. Do we have any question for this particular item before we proceed to the last one? Or the, the last two, last two items. All right, let's proceed to example number five. Example number five we have the absolute value of 2x minus 8 is greater than 0. Again, 2x minus 8 is greater than 0. All right. We know that, that our absolute value, again, is either is non-negative, either positive or 0. In this case class, we have a false statement if the entire absolute value is zero. Because if this is zero, zero is greater than zero. Is that true? So in this case, all real numbers are okay. No? Are okay for our solution set. Except for this number that will make our absolute value equal to zero. 
So in this case, we're going to find that number again. No? We're going to find that number in order for us to exclude, to exclude that particular number to our solution set. So in this case, 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. Let's find that. We have to add 8, add 8 on both sides. We have 2x is equal to 8, divide by 2, divide by 2. x is equal to 4. Right, because again, if you are going to substitute x equals to equals 4 to our absolute value inequality, we have 2 times 4, 2 times 4 minus 8, right, is greater than 0. We have 8 minus 8, absolute value of that is greater than 0. We have 0, absolute value of 0 is greater than 0. 0, greater than 0, and this is false. Zero can never be greater than zero. So in this particular example class, we have a restriction. It means that our solution set here is all real numbers except four. Four. Now, how are we going to write that? In, uh, it's in SBN, in set builder notation. It's, I think it's very easy. We have x such that x is element of real number. But we have to restrict that. But x should never be equal to 4. That's how we write in set builder notation. x such that x is, is element of real number or element of real number where x is not equal to 4. Now, how about in interval notation? Interval notation or in, interval notation. We just have one number that will be excluded in all real numbers, right? So in this case, let's have four and pakanto sa negative infinity. Exclude that. Union, four up to positive infinity, approaching positive infinity. Ayan, that's how we write all real number except by four. So in this case, class, how are we going to graph this? graph so we have we are going to draw the number line first and so we have here the the three four five all right we're just going to exclude that no? exclude the four will become hollow and your arrows will approach to the right and of course to the to the left and to the right. And that's how we, we graph x element of real number, but x is not equal to 4. All right, let's have number 6. Number 6. We have the absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Right? In this case, this is already um, glaring, right? We know this is the exact definition of our absolute value. X or the absolute value is always greater than or equal to zero. So in this case, no matter what the value of X is, we are guaranteed that the inequality is always true. Thus, the solution is all real numbers okay because it's greater than or equal to zero so our solution set is all real number okay that's our in and our graph you know that already and graph all real numbers so just everything on the number line all right so again that ends our part two Part two for the absolute value in equalities. And I'm going to see you uh, in our next video. Bye-bye.